Welcome to the series at Stuart 7A model steam plant. This is part 25. Making the new chimney exhaust inlet. The story so far, the outer tube fits on the inner tube. Now I need to drill a hole in the outer tube in exactly the same place as the one on the inner tube. It's simple enough to do. I've taken a measurement from the centre of the hole in the existing chimney down to the point at which it meets the flue tube. And I've made a spot on the outer tube using a felt tip pen where I need to drill the hole. And after drilling a hole, which is 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, I'm cleaning it up with a needle file. First of all on the outside, followed by cleaning up the inside with a half round needle file. This clip shows the outer chimney tube fitted over the inner chimney tube, and the holes align OK. Well, almost. A quick run through with a 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter drill aligns the holes perfectly. And in this clip, I've temporarily refitted the original chimney adapter. This is a view of the entire plant and most of the workbench and part of the workshop. It's good to stand back from time to time when you're doing a job like this just to get some perspective. And now to me the chimney looks better because it's slightly wider and a good bit longer than the original one. It suddenly occurred to me that this steam plant would make a really nice ornamental table lamp. All I would have to do is fit a suitable bulb like this into the top of the chimney. I just thought I would take this opportunity to mention that so far no one has spotted the deliberate mistake, which wasn't deliberate and wasn't a mistake. I'll tell you what it is at the end of the video. Back to the chimney job, I'm not going to use this fitting at all. Because, as I mentioned previously, you do not want a short stubby blast pipe at the bottom of a chimney. It would be fine if the boiler was coal fired, but it's not too good for a gas fired boiler. With the exhaust pipe so low in the chimney, the blast of the exhaust is likely to put the fire out. I'm going to use a different design for the chimney steam inlet or steam outlet, depending on which way you look at it. I have a piece of brass in the three jaw chuck in the Boxford lathe. The part that I'm making will fit down inside the chimney, and a commercial double steam union will go through both of the holes, which, apart from holding the entire assembly in position, will allow the steam exhaust to pass through the union and up the chimney. I need to reduce the diameter of this piece of brass considerably. If I use it at this diameter, it will block up most of the chimney, which is no good at all. I'm turning the external diameter of this piece of brass down to about 3 eighths of an inch. 3 eighths is probably a bit small because the hole down the centre is going to be 5 sixteenths, and also it's going to be threaded 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. But I'll try it at this diameter first, just to see how I go on. It's time now to centre drill the part. And for this, of course, I'm using a centre drill in the tailstock chuck. It's always best to use a centre drill to make sure the hole is in the centre. If you don't believe me, try going straight in with a twist drill. In this clip, I'm measuring and marking the maximum length that I need this piece of brass to be to fit down inside the chimney. The next part of the job is to use a twist drill to drill down to where the mark is. The tailstock quill has some graduations marked on it, but as the lathe is very old, they're quite worn and not very visible anymore. So I'm using, as usual, a simpler method. I'm just going to make a mark on the drill with a felt tip pen. Then, when I drill the hole down into the work, and the drill reaches the mark, I will know when to stop drilling. The felt tip pen line's a bit thick, but as long as I drill to the centre of the mark, everything should be OK. It will be bad news if I part off this component, and it has a hole in both ends. The next part of the job is to thread the hole using a 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch tap. It's probably best to do this by hand. I did it under power using back gear and it seemed to work okay. Plus, it took a lot less time to do. Time now for the usual parting off procedure. And by the sound of it, I think my parting tool's getting a bit blunt. I can feel that I'm having to put more pressure on it to get it through there. But eventually the part drops off and falls into the chip tray. In this clip, I'm cross drilling the piece of brass. First of all, using a center drill as always, followed by a twist drill. This is a 3 sixteenths of an inch twist drill because the pipe that's going to go up the chimney is 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. Here you see the principle. The part is just long enough when it's fitted inside the tube and really I should fit it in the lower tube. Here we go again. As you can see, the outlet is more or less exactly in the center. In this clip, I've temporarily fitted a steam union to show you how it's going to work. The outer diameter of this component is a bit too small. But I'm going to continue with it for the moment, you'll see why shortly. Here I'm cutting the internal pipe to length. 
and now it's into the outer part of the workshop to show you how not to silver solder. First of all, I apply the flux, which is easy flow number two, and then I start to heat the part with my blowtorch. At this point, you can see just how thin the wall of this fitting is. I turned the outer diameter too small. I'm applying the heat from the left, mainly on the copper pipe, and I'm waiting until the flux takes on a watery appearance before I apply any silver solder. And in no time at all, the flux starts to liquefy. I move the components so the pipe is at 90 degrees to the fitting and I'm applying the silver solder, which as you would expect, flashes around the joint. But oh dear, look what's happened. I think I'll keep the heat on a bit longer. My carefully crafted part is melting before my very eyes. I'll just keep the heat on a bit longer just to make sure it's silver soldered thoroughly. What I'm trying to illustrate here is the other side of the spectrum. Beginners often get problems silver soldering because they don't apply enough heat. This is the opposite to that, I've applied a bit too much and the steam union won't screw into it anymore. Time for take two. Here's one I prepared earlier. I wasn't happy with the first attempt because I'd turned the outer diameter too small. So while I was at the lathe, I made another one. This is a bit thicker. And it's silver soldered without being destroyed by the heat. And the double steam union screwed into this one quite easily because it wasn't melted. Now to fit the part into the chimney. The problem is my fingers are too big to go down inside the chimney and hold the piece of copper tubing. I don't want to use a pair of pliers. I'm using a thin piece of steel bar like this to go down the tube. But this is no good because I cannot hold the tube in the right position. But I got there in the end, and how did I do that? Here's the union screwed in place. All I did was very slightly bend the end of the steel bar. This gripped the copper pipe as I pushed it down inside it. A very simple solution to a simple problem requiring a minimum of thought. In this clip I've removed the steam union because before fitting it I need to drill it out a bit larger so that the steam exhaust can flow without any restriction. In a previous episode, I asked if anyone could spot the deliberate mistake with the piping. One viewer sent me a message, but he was confused with which pipe was which, whether it was inlet or outlet. That will become more obvious when I lag the live steam pipes with some string. A clue is that the dirty, uncleaned up pipes are the live steam pipes. Here we go then. If you look on the steam engine, there's a thing called a displacement lubricator, which provides oil for the cylinder. But what about the steam pump? That needs oil for its cylinder too but I'm not really seeing a displacement lubricator on the pump. I haven't fitted that yet. I can see where it's going to be fitted, and that's the reason I needed to make the pipe complete first. But never mind, at least it gave some people something to think about during this lockdown period. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.